I was with Bill for like five minutes and I realized that this guy was special. Mm, that one crushed it. You know, not only is he extremely knowledgeable in the fishery, but he's a blast to be with. <laughs> right in front of the, the trees that are touching the ground. You got him, you got him, you got him. He ate it, bro. It's midwinter here in the Florida Keys and a good buddy of mine who lives over in Everglades City, which is on the very southwest tip of Florida, called me just a couple days ago and said that uh, the snook and redfish bite was happening. It's a good time to go over there when the water temp drops after some cold fronts. Man, I'm excited. You know, I was uh, yesterday I was rigging tackle. Yeah. Felt like I was getting ready to go into a tournament, or it felt yeah. like it was before I was guiding yeah. days, going fishing yeah. with a buddy. It's been a while since I've got to get on the bow and, and do something Dude, different. I'm so excited to just pull you around. Yeah. Just you know, it, fish it, all day. Just. It's been a few years um, since I've been over here. It's yeah. been a couple anyway. Yeah. I, I used to come over 30 days a year or so with clients. Yeah or come yeah. over and, and film some with Jose, yeah. you know. One of the unique things about this part of the Everglades is it's on the very, very southwest tip of Florida, and it's actually where the main outflow of fresh water from the whole Everglades system drains into the Gulf of Mexico. That whole ecosystem feeds the Florida Keys. I've been looking forward to this. I'm yeah. excited to do it. Yeah. I want to go see your house. Let's go catch a fish. Let's go. I've known Captain Bill Faulkner for about 15 years. He's a guide over at Everglades City in Naples and he's a character. I've gotten to know him through Maverick. We're both sponsored by Maverick, and uh, he's just one of those guys that's fun to be around, whether you're fishing or just hanging out at a boat show, whatever it is. And over the years, we've been known to call him Butters. Let's go catch a fish. Let's go. Bubble yum, bubble gum. Bait looks good. I like it. What's the rule? I have to get down for anything over 27 inches, right? <laughs> <laughs> you can stay up there. I can, I can grab them. <sighs> I can catch something. Yeah, our redfish in the back the last two years have been, especially this year, almost non existent. I think. You know, for about four or five years after the, you know, after the freeze, the reds really proliferated, right? Yeah. And I think they ended up, a lot of them ended up back here and then they stuck around for like four, four or five years. And then all of a sudden they just disappeared. This was a, this was a spot that used to have quite a few reds in it. You think that's just they get? You think if they grow up and I, they go offshore? I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm wondering. Hold on, I gotta catch a fish. Come on, that's a good fish, brother. It's a nice little fish. Yep. You said this was a good spot. Yeah. <laughs> I believe that's you. It's a nice little fish. I believe you. It's a nice little fish, my man. I'll take him to start. That's a great fish. He liked the bubble gum. You know what, he did not. Those other fish flashed on it. He, he ate just it. came up and ate it. Yeah, he came up and ate it. He's bigger than the first two that ate it for sure. Oh, that's yeah. a nice little fish, no, that's man. A, that's, a, that's a great little Everglades snook. Look, he's got a little damage on this side of his body, Rob. You know, he's got it on both sides, actually. Something had a hold of him when he was young, huh? You know, Look I, at you that. Know, I bet that's the osprey. Yeah. They aimed wrong. Yeah. Usually the osprey try to get him here. Yeah. That's actually pretty fresh too, actually. Yeah. yeah, it hasn't started to grow back yet. Yeah. 20 incher. I'll take that. Maybe a little bigger. Nice little fish, man. Golden. Nice, my man. First nook together, brother. Yeah, man. Thank you. My pleasure. You know, an average tide fluctuation back here might be 
maybe what, eight to 12, 14 inches at the most. Uh huh. Or on the coast is three feet. It, when you get the north winds, especially, right, that blows the water out. Yep. And, you know, changes the water levels back here far more dramatically than the tide does. Right. Which I think makes the fish way more available. That's a nice fish right there. That is there, a good Robin. fish. That's a nice fish. That's a good fish right there, brother. That's a nice fish. Is that a red what we've been talking about all morning? Looks like a red fish. I think it's a red. How about that? The Sea Hunter is brought to you by the Florida Keys and Key West. Come as you are. Sea Hunter boats, indestructible, unsinkable. Yeti coolers, built for the wild. Yamaha outboards. Wet sounds, the ultimate sound machine for your boat. Garmin verbs, the official action camera of the Sea Hunter. That's a nice fish. That's a good fish right there, brother. That's a nice fish. Is that a red what we've been talking about all morning? Looks like a red fish. I think it's a red. Um, how about that? You know what? I wonder if that was him that tailed out on this grass, Rob. It's a nice red fish. Yes, it is, brother. It's good fish. Nice, brother. Nice, my man. Goldilocks. Well, you know what? You said there used, this used to be a great redfish spot, and guess yeah. what? It still is. Yeah. <laughs> That's a heavy fish. No, bro. he's very, very thick. That's a heavy fish. I'm, gonna try, I'm trying to lose him the best I can. <laughs> you gonna roll off that. Man, that's a heavy fish. No, that thing has been eaten. Gold, too, brother. That's one thing I love about the, the redfish back here is the color. Yeah. Man, it looks like mm -hmm. a penny. Fat, look at that. that. This is the fattest redfish. I mean, this looks like a Louisiana redfish. Yeah, it does. Man. You've been fishing 20 minutes? You wouldn't have caught that fish without that cast either. No, he hit it right yeah. where right where the bait was, you know, right where it hit. You could see him glowing. As soon as oh, he as soon hit, as he, yeah, yeah, he yeah. was glowing. My man, excellent dude, awesome. Twenty minutes, man. We're on the board in a big way. Yeah. Everglades City is a small town between Naples and Miami, and I have a lot of fond memories there. My grandfather had a trailer there, so a, as a youngster. I grew up fishing there off the docks and he had a little John boat that I would take out. It's a treacherous place to try and navigate. There's a lot of oyster bars and, and rocks and, and so forth that if you do not have local knowledge of these waters, it's not a place that you just wanna go put a boat in and start running around. But that to me uh, entices me because that does keep a lot of the, the normal weekenders out of there. So unless you have you know, extensive knowledge of this place, you're not going to the places that Bill's gonna take me. At first glance, it may seem like we're just going down these shorelines and, and just prospecting, you know, blind casting. But we're actually not just prospecting. We're, we're, we're hunting while we're going down these shorelines. We're looking for any hint that a snook or redfish or tarpon is there. We're looking for a roll of a tarpon. We're looking for a little push or a wake. We're looking for a snook to bust down the shoreline as we spook bait from the boat and the bait starts going down the mangrove shoreline. We're looking for any hint that the fish may be there, including a little mud puff, uh, a surge in, in water under the trees. And if you're not getting the bait back under the trees in these situations, while you are prospecting, you're not in the zone. Oh, that's a good that's fish, a Robert. One. That's a better fish. That's a good one. Did you see what I did there? Yes, the, the retrieve. It. He liked that retrieve better. Yep. All right, I thought he was bigger than he is. He ate it big. Yeah, he did. <laughs> he ate it big. That, this looks like the fish that I, I saw yeah. or similar size to the one I saw eat that I thought was a better fish. Let's try and be quiet because there's a bunch of fish yeah. there. I think that one that ate it back in the trees was even bigger than I, that I one. agree.
but that's not a bad one. That's right, bro. I will take that all day long. Healthy. Yeah. Good looking fish. Our fish have been really, really healthy the last couple years, I think. There he goes. You ever grab a rod and cast a bait and it just feels amazing? I mean, everything is well balanced. It just feels like they were made for each other and they were made for your hand. And then there are other times you grab a rod and it just feels like crap. I mean, nothing's balanced. It feels like the bait is overpowering the rod and that's exactly what's happening. This is a two power rod. It's made for casting light little bonefish jigs with light line, six to eight pound, pound braid. This is a five power rod. These are both part of the TFO inshore series. This rod's made for casting ounce, ounce and a half baits, 15, 12 to 15, 16 pound braid. If I was to put that little bonefish jig on this rod, I'd have a hard time casting at 15 feet. If I was to put this big plug on that little two, two weight rod, it would cast it, but it would feel very, very overpowered and very, very overweighted. It's very important to match your line size and your bait size to the power rod that you're using. The reason you pick the right line size for the right rod and the right bait is you don't want to miss that opportunity. In fishing, those opportunities only come along so often, you want to make it count. So how I became a guide was actually sort of out of my control. It, it, like, it was not a conscious decision that I made at any single point in my life. It was just a series of events that sort of took place that sort of led me to guiding. My dad actually died when I was five or six years old. I was very fortunate to have an uncle. He was in the coal business in West Virginia. He would spend his winters down here at the old KOA campground on 951 out toward Marco. And I would be four, five years old, and this old guy that was like in the campground like knew how to fish. And he taught us all these little tricks to catch snook taught us about little bucktail jigs and tube jigs and, and all this stuff. And we were fishing the 10,000 Islands and Port of the Islands, Marco Island, Everglades. Just seemed like a part of my life growing up was just fishing. Hey, uh, eating it coming right at you. Look at that fish pushing up the, up the bank, Rob. Oh, that was tarpon. Oh, there they are. They're all over it. They won't eat it. There that we one go. ate it. Oh, no! Did, did I say something about <laughs> if they eat this, no, we're going to catch dead. it? Yeah. That was the stupidest thing I've ever said. <laughs> I jinxed us. <laughs> yeah. Really got a good look at how they're eating there. That one ate There it. we go. Oh, no! <laughs> that one was stuck. Look, he's behind it. Come on, eat it. <laughs> Perseverance, baby. <laughs> Perseverance. Up. Perseverance. Nice. <laughs> Sweet brother. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> That's all right, dude. <laughs> you made that one pay the price for the other ones. <laughs> Days can be long. If the fishing's tough, you've got to have something to lighten the mood, right? So something always makes me think of something else. It can be, you know, something as simple as a bubblegum colored jerk bait makes me think of a 25-year-old rap song that I used to listen to. So I start singing that 25-year-old rap song. Some dumb, bubble yum, bubble gum, chewing, chumps, be screwing. <laughs> Something 
pushing around a little bit there. Ooh, that's a nice fish, Rob. That's a heavy fish, huh? He's shaking his head. Ooh, it's good. a big red. It's another red, dude. Well, he tried to get me back in the bushes there right at the beginning. It's a nice red, man. It is. It's a great red. Just when we were talking about not seeing a lot of redfish in the backcountry. Yeah. That red is pretty green. <laughs> you think? <laughs> put him in the chokehold. <laughs> there we go. Nice. Well, he put a bend in that rod, too. Great little fish, man. Keep up with The Sea Hunter on social media. Follow us on Instagram and like us on Facebook. You can also visit us at theseahuntertv.com. The Sea Hunter is brought to you by Ray Marine, Simply Superior, Mojo Sportswear, Get Your Mojo On, TFO Rods, Power to the Angler, Sea Star Solutions, Best Fab, Steel Fabrication and Design since 1975, Yeti Coolers, Built for the Wild. This style of fishing has many elements of intricacies. You, know, you have to cast well. Another key element is once a fish eats, a snook especially, his first reaction is to get back into the trees when he feels that hook. So it's important to keep the heat on him as much as you can early in the fight to get him away from those trees out in the open water where you can fight him. Oh, he came back and got it. Nice. That was a cool bite. Yeah, it was, buddy. There was no mistake about that. It wasn't a nibble. That's a good fish. Yeah. Nice, good fish, Rob. Nice I think bite. it's a great fish. One unique thing I've found about big snook in these areas is it's not uncommon that they get in the smallest little nook and cranny spot that you, you happen to visit that day. And that's all in the snook's favor because you hook them in these tight little quarters and they immediately have many options to get you wrapped up in. right in front of the, the trees that are touching the ground. Like, We're, yes, it was like to, just to the left, where the trees are touching the- Right here? Just, yes, yes, a little left of that. He's going, yes, he's right going there, to right the there. right. Big fish, moving right, moving right. You got him, you got him, you got him. He ate it, bro. That one crushed it. Dude, he ate it. You got it, you got it, you got it. Go, 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 go. Go to the trees, dude, he's under Dude, he's down, he's getting it. Rotch him down, rotch him down. Just stop, just stop, just stop, just stop. I got him out, I got him out. We got him out. Nice, got him out. nice, nice. Dude, dude you see right the size down of that thing? Of the creek, right down the middle of the creek, dude. All right, you got him, you got him out, you got him out. He's going right down the middle of the creek, dude. Right down the middle of the creek. He's gonna go left, he's gonna go left. Fuck, get out of there, bastard. Dude, he got me in there. He's in it. 
I got him out. Got him. Good, 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 good. Nice, brother. Great spot on that fish, bro. Great spot on that fish. <laughs> Dude, that was so I did not awesome. believe I do not believe that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's a great snook right there, bro. That is a great snook right there. Damn. Dude, in such a small little spot. Dude, you fed that fish. I mean, that is a is a great fish in a little spot. Look at the spot we caught him in. <laughs> he had us in the trees. I mean, you can see his head in the trees shaking, yeah. trying to pull the the hook out of his face. Yeah. <laughs> what an awesome fish, bro. <laughs> That's classic Everglades right there. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Pretty sight, brother. Hey, nice job. Thanks, man. I'll never forget that. Fish. Yeah. I'll never forget that little spot. The bites, yeah. bites, ah, yeah. not just bite, bites. It just, you just kept your cool and just he hit it and came past it. Right. Kept gliding toward the boat. Yeah. Reeled it, twitched it again. He, he couldn't hit that bait three times. He couldn't stand. You hooked him. I hooked him. He once. ate it again. He, ate, he he blew it in the air. Yeah. Glided past it. You yeah. reeled it up, twitched it again, and he ate it again. Yeah. That was. Awesome, dude. It was great to go back to Everglades City. I hadn't been there in a while. It was great to go with Bill and, and him show me all the, the nook and cranny places that he knows. I haven't had this much fun fishing with a guy in a long time. We've never fished together, and the guy's a hoot. I mean, he's just busting your chops all day. So overall, it was a great day. We caught a handful of fish, and it was an awesome experience with one hell of a funny guy. <laughs> hey, this guy, he's funny. We're going to leave him out here in the Everglades, though. <laughs> He's funny for the last time.